Matt Yasa here, going to be revisiting the explosive spinner today. And I'll start off this project by pulling a point. I've warmed up a section in the middle and begin to pull out a large thin tube, which will be the blow tube for the project. And this is one of those traditional techniques, and it's definitely one you want to practice. It can save time in breaking down your tubing, especially if it's a heavy wall tubing. Those are very hard to cut. Now my blow tube is looking pretty straight, but it is a little bit off. And that's normal. Whenever you pull a point, you want to go back and heat up that shoulder and correct the alignment. You rotate and pull a little bit and it'll start to get back into the centered axis. And you always want to make sure your blow tubes and punties are aligned on center. That way the rest of your project will stay on center. And now my other point didn't really work out as I wanted, so I'll go ahead and melt it off and go in for an attachment on that blow tube. Now I'll heat up that end a little bit to thicken it up and then puff into it to round it out. And real quick, I'll switch over to a tube and flare it open for that blow tube attachment. And I'll pull a little bit of glass out of the end just to thin it out and to center up my bubble for when I pop it. And I'll heat up that little area there and puff out a little thin bubble that I can pick open with a rod. And ripping it open like that is a safer method than popping it out in the air. But now I'll go in for the attachment and I'll make sure to heat up both sides very, very hot, very molten, and then push them together and making sure to rotate at the same time. And then I'll start to pull a little bit to align it up and to pull out some of that excess glass from the attachment. And then I'll melt it in half and make two spinners for the project. I'm making the spinners half the size. And I'll see if that helps them spin faster. Because with less weight, they should need less energy to get moving. And I wanted to give you a quick update on one of the current videos. In my last video, I mentioned I was going to do a larger project for reaching a thousand subscribers. And I'm still working on that one. It's just taking a little bit more time than I thought. And here's a sneak peek of what that's gonna look like. It's not complete yet. This is kind of a prototype. But until that's done, I figured I'd revisit the explosive spinner and try to make it better. And now I'm gonna start puffing out a nice small sphere. I was just heating up the glass. I let it radiate a few seconds to even out that heat and then give it a nice few solid puffs. So I'm attaching a punty and I'll pull out a nice thin area that I can detach my blow tube later. I still need to puff out the holes, so I'll keep my blow tube attached for right now, but that'll just help out the process later. So I broke my punty off and went ahead and melted in the remainder, and now I'm gonna puff out some bubbles to pop holes. So the idea here is to pop several holes around the sphere and then use the tweezers to shape them in the right direction. And I'll start breaking those holes open with this rod. And the reason for that is if I would to blow them open, it would be very hard to do. If I'm doing multiple holes on the same tube, I'll lose pressure out of the first couple holes and I won't be able to blow out the others. Now I'll start heating up those holes now that they're open and go in with my tweezers and kind of move around the glass and redirect the hole so that it's at an angle. And with all the holes angled at the same direction, then when that firework goes off, it'll cause it to spin. And if you haven't seen that episode, you should check it out. It's pretty good. I go into a lot more detail about how it works. But this one is a lot smaller than the last one. This is about half the size. And I think the last one did about two and a half spins. So this one should do a lot more. And I think I'm done with this uh, explosive mini spinner. I'll go ahead and go into this next one with a zoomed in lens. And about halfway done already just to save on some time. 
And at this point, I'm just puffing out those very thin bubbles to break open to make those holes. And I'm gonna put six holes on this one where my last one had eight. And this one's looking a little bit more durable though, a little bit larger. And remember to hit that like button if you like what you see and feel free to leave a comment. And also, if you're wondering where to get some of my work, I will be starting an Etsy account. Etsy is a little website to help crafters and creators sell some of their products online. And I don't have anything on my page right now, but I will plan to upload some stuff pretty soon. Most likely some marbles and pendants. And as time goes, we'll just see what kind of stuff I can put up there. I'm kind of excited to see uh, what's going to happen with it. Should be pretty cool. But now I've just been going in and shaping the holes with the tweezers to make sure they're all in the right direction. And then using the brass reamer to open up that hole to get enough airflow coming out of the chamber. And I just took off that blow tube and then I need to open a hole here on the top. But since I can't pressurize it, I'll just have to keep pulling glass out until it's thin enough that the flame pops it open. And then I'll just heat up that rim to even it out and finish it. And I'll put them both in the kiln at 1050 degrees for half an hour. And now it's time to run the test. And I think that worked pretty well. I was able to harness that explosive power into over 10 rotations. That's about eight more than my last one was doing. And now test two. Oh no, it didn't survive another explosion. Oh, and on top of that, there has been some collateral damage. It has taken apart a bit of the glass science fritz sign. But that's okay, my studio is always updating. It might be time for a new sign. Time to test the next spinner. Ooh, and it blew up on the first test. Well, at least the first one did well. And that's gonna do it for this video. This is Matt Yasa. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a great day.